All right, so we're talking about the brace ban. It went into effect on May 30. Well, actually, January 31st is when the brace ban went into effect. And you actually had until May 31st to file your paperwork, whether it's a Form 1, your dealer, Form 2. You had until May 31st to do that. And if you didn't do that on May 31st, guess what? Starting June 1st, the ATF said they're going to start, you know, enforcement. And so, and also, it, you know, you no longer get the $200 tax stamp fee waived. Starting June 1st, June 1st, you have to pay your $200 tax stamp fee. And it's a possibility if you're caught with it, you're going to be charged with a felony. So let's bring to the conversation Edwin Walker with Texas U.S. Law Shield. Edwin, welcome to Come and Talk It, sir. Hello. Thanks for having me. Absolutely, sir. So what's your take on this, Edwin? Well, actually, you know, I, it's kind of interesting. It really is unprecedented. I guess, you know, the only thing we'd have it to compare it to is the original 1968 amnesty. Um, which, you know, I was around, but I was, uh, I was too young to be engaging in the uh, uh, firearms work in 1968. So I don't really have any firsthand knowledge of what happened then. But what's interesting is that I believe I saw a figure where the ATF has said that about a quarter of a million, 250,000 uh, firearms had been registered or had in the process of being registered under this, uh, which is which is a, a fraction, a hyper fraction of the number of firearms that are out there that qualify for registration. Um, I see all estimates anywhere from 10 to 30 million possible firearms with stabilizing braces. And so uh, there's going to be a lot of, if the ATF is, is sincere about their enforcement, um, they're either going to have to do a lot of violation of the fourth and fifth amendments uh, or they're going to have to, or people are just going to have to be really, really reckless in the way that they uh, interact uh, on social media, in person, at the range, things like this. So, so I don't know that enforcement is going to be a big issue. And while it is important to be a member of these organizations, and I think that just in general, everybody should be a member of, you know, uh, whatever gun multiple gun organizations they want to support the work of the Second Amendment, the Second Amendment Foundation, Gun Owners of America, of course, Fire and Policy Coalition, um, all of those, you, you should always be a member. But as far as the actual rulings, um, you were, your analysis is pretty correct in that I believe if we were to take a very technical, hyper-technical uh, look, analysis at these rulings, it really does only apply to plaintiffs and uh, obviously, I think that that legally, the, the people who have the most legal, um, the best legal argument are people who were members of those plaintiff organizations at the time the lawsuit was filed. Mm. So those people are going to be, quote unquote, protected for now. However, I see it as a legal impracticability, if not a legal impossibility for the federal government to actually go after somebody who uh, is in possession of one of these braces before these cases are legally resolved. Wow. And that's crazy. Only 250,000 uh, the brace, uh, the pistol braces were actually registered as SBRs. Only 250,000. That's less than 1%. Less than 1% of the, of the, the braces that were actually put in production. That's insane. Yeah. And so a lot of people, I'm guessing a lot of people are, took the attitude of just wait and see um, because, uh, you know, you don't want to register too early, uh, you know, because now the government, you know, if this turns out to be a complete overreach, uh, I don't know that the government's going to actually destroy the records. They should, and they probably will be ordered to, but I don't know if they will actually uh, destroy the records of people who uh, volunteered this information to say, hey, I own one of these firearms. Uh, and also, since one of the options, as opposed to the bump stock, you know, comparing it to the bump stock, they, you know, they actually did prohibit the piece of, you know, polymer that made up the bump stock. Uh, but unlike that, the, the actual brace or blade is not a prohibited item in and of itself. And so I'm sure many people just took the route that, 
uh, you know, I'll get my Allen wrench out and I'll separate the two and <laughs> I'll be fine until this all works out. Yeah, I, I think it's amazing. Ninety percent. That means ninety nine percent plus ninety nine percent Americans are like f you to the uh, to the ATF. Yeah, they're like, hey, we're not going to comply with this. This is man, this is unprecedented. 